simply do it because you can think about it the whole time. You can listen to so many people tell you about how amazing the Sherpa people are or about this trek or perhaps the Annapurnas, but there is nothing quite like experiencing it for yourselves. So Charlie's really nervous, but what he's trying to say is, Charlie has got me, Kenton Cool, the original founder of Dream Guides, now a venture base, and he's got me this afternoon and he wants to grab some fantastic content to help you guys with some frequently asked questions about trekking in the Kumbu, that's the Everest region of Nepal. We have compiled a list of all the questions that you have asked us over the years for Everest Base Camp Trek. Favorite section of the Everest Base Camp Trek? Oh, favorite part of the trek. Uh, it's gotta be the higher reaches. Uh, there's one particular part coming out of Pangboche and you, you wind round past a little village and you come up onto a plateau area by a lone tea house called Orsha. And I love that area. It opens up a little bit. You're above the tree line. It's a little juniper bushes. That's about the only vegetation. And you're on your way to Dingboche. What makes the country so special? Well, well that's a big question. I mean, the, the country is special, I think, partly because of its natural beauty. Uh, but there's a lot of it it's got to do with people. The, the people are so generous of heart. They're so fun loving. They're so accommodating. Add to that, as I said, the natural beauty. And you have the perfect ingredients for a fantastic expedition, trek, or even a holiday. It's such an amazing, diverse place. I love it. For almost every high altitude trip, how will the altitude affect themselves? But, but <coughs> what can they do to prepare for it? What can they do to be safe on the trip? What are your tips? Uh, altitude affects everybody in different ways. I seem to acclimatize quite well, but it doesn't mean I will acclimatize again next time. So if you've been to, say you climb Mont Blanc or maybe Tukkal or Kilimanjaro, it doesn't necessarily mean you will acclimatize again. However, I think mentally you will go quite well prepared. What's in your day pack? So in my day pack, I have very little. Depending on where I am in the Kumbu, I will have little more than litre of water. I will probably have a down jacket of some description just in case it gets cold. May have a thin pair of gloves. I will have some tissues or some wipes of some description. I always carry a mini fur day kit, but that's predominantly because I'm looking after people. Always a camera. Some people like walking with headphones and things like that. I'm not a big fan of that. I like being able to look around and, and being at one with my surroundings. I think what we're trying to do with this trip is it's less about thrashing yourself up the mountain. It's more about enjoying the experience. What is your favorite snack on the trip? What's your go-to? So this will really surprise people. Uh, one of the local business, uh, biscuits, you get it in small yellow packets about that long, that round, and the, the, the coconut biscuits. Mm. And it's a local biscuit and it will cost you about five rupees, about maybe 10 rupees. What's that? Um, 10 rupees is uh, five pieces, nothing. And there's about I don't know, 15 biscuits in there. And I love them. Uh, you can't get them anywhere else. You only get them in the pool. So I've always got a bag or two kicking around. They're not super healthy for you. They're packed full of sugar, but I really like them. The weather to like? Depends a little bit on the time of year. Arguably, the best time to go for trekking is autumn, arguably. Uh, so October, November time, cold, but high pressure, blue skies. During the day, you might be in a t-shirt or long sleeve thermal. Even in time or if you're in the shade, you might put a little duvet jacket like this one on. Very little rain. Fitness level, massive question. Fitness level, genuinely good level of fitness. You don't need to be an Olympic athlete. It's worth doing a little bit of training because you want to enjoy it. Mm -hmm. the, the accommodation, the tea houses. Tea houses, since I first went there, they've come on leaps and bounds. Uh, super comfortable now. As you go up the Kumbu, they become a little bit more uh, basic. But generally, you know, you get a bed, mattress, there's quite often a, a basic pillow, and maybe a blanket or a duvet. They're warm, they have a pot belly stove. Food is normally tip top, lots of tea coming out. But they, they are comfortable. Yeah, okay. They are super comfortable. Visas, always a big question. Some, something we'll help you with, don't worry. But Visas, uh, generally you can get visas on arrival. Uh, which is one of the easiest ways to, to get it. If you're coming from the UK, you can pop to the embassy in London and you can get it issued in a day, or you can just pop your passport in the post. Yep. Um, very easy online uh, application. 
to get it in advance. But to be honest, it's super easy to get it on arrival. Kenton, any other little, little nuggets? That you... Sing, the single biggest nugget I can give you is simply do it. Because you can think about it the whole time. You can listen to so many people tell you about how amazing the Shepherd people are, or about this track, or perhaps the Annapurnas, but there is nothing quite like experiencing it for yourself. Very good. That's it. Thank you very much, Kenton Cool, for your insights. My pleasure. And we'll for see you in the Kumba. <laughs> and for your intro. Um, any questions, you know where we are, so ping us an email, um, DM us on Instagram, whatever's easiest for you guys. And, uh, Let's get you to the pool, hopefully sooner rather than later. Voila! It's really cold. <laughs> <laughs>